video i'll tell you what is asymptote and different kinds of asymptotes and how to find asymptotes to a given curve so let us start with definition of asymptotes a straight line is said to be an asymptote of an infinite branch of a curve if as a point P recedes to infinity along the branch the perpendicular distance of P from the straight line tends to zero. This definition is little bit complicated to understand so let us define it some in some easier words so in the simplest language we can define an asymptote as a tangent to a curve at a point at infinity is set or is called an asymptote to the curve a tangent to a curve at a point at infinity is called an asymptote is called an asymptote to the curve so suppose this is a straight line and this is a curve so if a branch of a curve seems to be parallel to a straight line then it is considered or we can say it is assumed that this straight line touches this curve externally at some point at infinity that is a that is at a great distance so in this case this straight line is called asymptote to this curve now we we will discuss the types of asymptotes so I have written all these texts in advance so that to save your time. The kinds of asymptotes. There are two types of asymptotes. One is parallel asymptotes. Other is oblique asymptotes. Basically Parallel asymptotes are the asymptotes which are either parallel to y-axis or parallel to x-axis. Say in this example, this is an asymptote to this curve which is parallel to y-axis. This is straight line which is asymptote to this curve is parallel to y-axis. So this is called asymptote parallel to y-axis. Similarly, in this figure, this curve seems to be parallel to this straight line here. So this straight line is called asymptote to this curve and the asymptote is parallel to x-axis. So this asymptote is said to be asymptote parallel to x-axis. The x-axis itself can be asymptote to any curve. Suppose a branch of curve seems to be parallel to x-axis itself. So x-axis is said to be its parallel asymptote. Now second, second kind is oblique asymptote. So an asymptote which is neither parallel to x-axis nor parallel to y-axis is called oblique asymptote. See in this example, in this figure, this is an asymptote to this curve and since this asymptote is neither parallel to x-axis nor parallel to y-axis, so we call it oblique asymptote. 
So any asymptote which is neither parallel to x-axis nor parallel to y-axis is called oblique asymptote. Now next we have to discuss how to find a parallel asymptote. First, to find an asymptote parallel to x-axis, we equate the variable coefficient of the highest degree terms, highest degree term in x to 0. Again, I repeat, to find an asymptote parallel to x-axis, we equate the variable coefficient of the highest degree term in x to 0 and suppose there is no variable coefficient of x-axis that is the coefficient of x sorry suppose there is no variable coefficient of x highest degree term in x that is the coefficient of the highest degree term in x is constant then there is no asymptote parallel to x-axis. In the same way we find asymptote parallel to y-axis. So in order to find an asymptote parallel to y-axis v equate to 0 the variable coefficient of highest degree term in y. So as we said in the case of x-axis if the coefficient of the highest degree term in y is constant, there is no asymptote parallel to y-axis. So suppose this is an example, if x minus a y cube plus 3x y square plus x square plus 2y square plus 3xy plus 2 is equal to 0 and we need to find out the parallel asymptotes to this curve. So as we see the highest degree term in y is y cube and its coefficient is x minus a which is a variable because of x. So in order to find the parallel asymptote to y axis we equate x minus a the variable coefficient of highest degree term in y to 0. So x minus a is equal to 0 and this is the asymptote parallel to y-axis. Now, if we observe the highest degree term in x, so we see the highest degree term in x is this term, x square, and its coefficient is 1, which is constant, so that means there is no variable coefficient of the highest degree term in x, so we can say that there is no asymptote parallel to x-axis. There is no asymptote parallel to x-axis. This is how we find asymptotes of a curve parallel to x-axis or parallel to y-axis. In this section, we are going to discuss how to find oblique asymptotes to a curve because in the previous section we have discussed how to find parallel asymptotes to a curve. So there are several steps and this process is a little bit lengthy. So let us start. I have divided the whole process in few steps so that you can cram it up and understand better. So step one. First we substitute x is equal to 1 and y is equal to m in the highest degree terms of x and y. I repeat, first we substitute x is equal to 1 and y is equal to m in the highest degree terms of x and y the expression so obtained is denoted by phi m n where n is the 
degree of the highest degree terms. Then in the next step, we find auxiliary equation which is obtained by equating phi m n to 0. That is the expression we have obtained in the previous step that is equated to 0. Let it be equation number 1. So in the first, second step we solve this equation for m. In the third step, now we find phi m n minus 1 by substituting x is equal to 1 and y is equal to m in the next highest degree terms of x and y. In the next highest degree term means the terms highest in degree excluding the terms whose degree is n. So next in the next highest degree terms we substitute x is equal to 1 and y is equal to m and the expression so obtained is denoted by phi m n minus 1. Now in the step 4 now we differentiate phi m n the expression obtained in the first step we differentiate this expression with respect to m and find phi dash n m in the step number 5 we find the value of c by the formula c is equal to minus phi m n minus 1 upon phi dash m n for the different values of m obtained from equation number 1 as we have shown in the step number 2 we have solved the phi m n is equal to 0 so the values obtained from this step step number 2 from equation number 1 we find the value of c corresponding value of c so by this formula phi c is equal to minus phi m n minus 1 upon phi dash m n so in the sixth step and that is the last step at last we find the required asymptotes required oblique asymptotes by putting the values of m and c obtained in the previous steps in y is equal to mx plus c. This is the whole process to find asymptotes of a curve which are neither parallel to x-axis nor parallel to y-axis or oblique asymptotes we can say. So in the next section I'll explain this method by taking a suitable example. Here, before proceeding to the next section, here I would like to say something more about the algorithm to find oblique asymptotes so that it is quite clear to understand. So as we have given the process to find oblique asymptotes, in the previous sections and we have divided the whole process in few steps. Let m1 and m2 are the values of, of m obtained by solving equation number 1 and c1 and c2 are the corresponding values of c. Then the required oblique asymptotes to the given curve are y is equal to m1x plus c1 and y is equal to m2x plus c2. There is a particular case too. Sometimes we find that m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m. So by that is by solving equation number 1 for m we get two same values. Though we may, we may have three same values 
or more but generally in most of the cases we find either all the values different or we get two same value and other values different so i am taking this case study and uh, you can apply the same uh, concept if there are more values of m identical so if m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m then we find the values of c by solving the equation c square upon 2 phi double dash m n that is the second differential of phi m n with respect to m plus c phi dash m n minus 1 that is the first differential of m phi m n minus 1 plus phi m n minus 2 is equal to 0 so by solving this quadratic equation in c we find two values of c so we have two values of m that means the repeated values we can say and the two corresponding values of c so that we can substitute the values of m and c in y is equal to mx plus c to obtain the result like y is equal to m1x plus c1 is equal to y is equal to m2x plus c2 though in this case there must be same number so we can write mx plus c1 and here mx plus c2 now let us talk about the process of finding asymptotes of a curve in detail with the help of this example so for example we have to find asymptotes to the curve y cube minus 2x square minus x square y plus 2x cube plus 3y square minus 7xy plus 2x square plus 2y plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So as we can see clearly the first term has degree 3 and the second term also has degree 3 because if there are more than one variable in a term the degree of the term is the sum of the exponents of both the, both the variables so there is x and y square so their exponents are 1 and 2 and the sum is 3 so degree of this term is considered to be 3 and in the, similarly in the next term there is x square y so degree of this term is also 3 degree of third term is quite clear that is 3 and the degree of next term is 2 degree of this term that is 7xy is 2 because there are two variables x and y and the sum of the exponents is 2 and the next 2x square so degree is 2 in the next term there is only one variable and its power is 1 so its degree is 1 next 2x degree is 1 and next the constant term that is degree is 0 so the highest degree terms are these terms these four terms are highest degree terms so according to the algorithm to find out the oblique asymptote in the first step we substitute x is equal to 1 and y is equal to m in the highest degree terms of x and y so if we substitute y is equal to m and x is equal to 1 in these four terms we have phi m3 because degree is 3 so simply we can write it we may write it as phi m3 which is equal to m cube because y cube is there so m cube and here in this term if we substitute x is equal to 1 and y is equal to m we have 2m square and if in this term we substitute the same we have minus m and in the last term 2x cube if we substitute x is equal to 1 we have 2 so this is our phi m 3 let it be equation number 1 now let us solve phi m 3 is equal to 0 so we have m cube minus 2m square minus m plus 2 or 
out of these two terms we may take s square common leaving m minus 2 in the bracket and the, in the next two term we may take minus 1 common leaving m minus 2 in the bracket is equal to 0. Now out of these two terms the bracket m minus 2 is common so we have m minus 2 and in the other bracket we have m square minus 1 is equal to 0. So again we may write m square minus 1 as m plus 1 m minus 1 so we have m minus 2 m plus 1 m minus 1 is equal to 0 and so we have m is equal to 2 minus 1 and 1. These three values we get after solving phi m3. So as we see all the three values are different. So now we have to differentiate phi m3 with respect to m so as we see phi m3 is m cube minus 2 m square minus m plus 2 so its differential which is which is denoted by phi dash m3 is equal to 3 m square because differential of m cube with respect to m is 3 m square differential of 2 m square is 4 m differential of minus m is minus 1 so we have 3m square minus 4 minus 1. So let it be equation number 2. Now, next. Now we have to find out the corresponding values of C. So the formula is C is equal to minus phi m n minus 1 upon phi dash m n. So in this case we have minus phi m 2 that is phi m n minus 1 because here in this example n is equal to 3 so n minus 1 must be 2 so we have phi m 2 and upon phi dash m n that is phi dash m 3. So now we need phi m 2. The phi m 2 is obtained by substituting x is equal to 1 and y is equal to m in the next highest degree terms that is second degree terms in the, in the equation. So we have so as we see in this we have the expression this the, the, these four terms are highest degree terms and the next three terms are second degree terms that is next highest degree terms. So after substituting y is equal to m and x is equal to 1 we have 3m square minus 7m plus 2. So we have 5m2 is equal to 3m square minus 7m plus 2. You see this y is equal to m x is equal to 1 3m square minus 7m plus 2. So in this way we have we get m phi m2. So putting the values of phi m2 and phi dash m3 in this expression we have minus 3m squared minus 7m plus 2 in the numerator and in denominator as we have calculated in the previous step, previous page phi dash m3 is equal to 3m squared minus 4m minus 1 so in the denominator we write 3m square minus 4 minus m. So the first value of m is 2. So we write if m is equal to 2, c is equal to, if we substitute x is equal to, m, sorry m is equal to 2 in this expression we have 3 into 4 that is 12 and here 2, 7 to the 14 that is minus 14 plus 2 plus 2. 3m square that is 3 into 4 that is 12 and here 2 into 4 that is 8 minus 1. So ultimately we have minus 12 plus 2 that is plus 14 minus 14 in the numerator. We have 0 in the denominator we have 3 12 minus 9. So 0 upon 3 is 0 so c is equal to 0. Next if m is equal to minus 1 the next value of m is minus 1 so to find 
the corresponding value of CV substitute now m is equal to minus 1 in this expression so we have c is equal to minus 1 and if we substitute m is equal to minus 1 so minus 1 square is positive 1 so plus 3 and if we substitute m is equal to minus 1 here minus minus plus it becomes plus 7 and plus 2 and in denominator we have 3m square that is 3m minus 1 whole square that is plus 3 because minus 1 square becomes positive 1 and here if we substitute m is equal to minus 1 it becomes plus 4 plus 4 and minus 1 so we see in the numerator it is 3 7 2 that is 12 this minus sign as it is 12 in the numerator and in denominator we have 3 plus 4 7 minus 1 that is 6 so minus 12 upon 6 and 6 will divide 12 2 times 3 and get c is equal to minus 2 now next value of m is 1 for which we have to find out the corresponding value of c so let us substitute m is equal to 1 in this expression this time so m is equal to 1 c is equal to minus as it is and m is equal to 1 so we have 3 minus 7 2 in denominator we have 3 minus 4 minus 1 so 3 plus 2 5 minus 7 that is minus 2 and in denominator 3 minus 5 because minus 4 minus minus 5 3 minus 5 is minus 2 so in denominator and numerator we have the same number that is minus 2 so these are cancelled by each other leaving 1 and there is already minus outside so we get minus 1 as the corresponding value of c now at last when we have calculated the possible values of m and corresponding values of c we substitute the value values of m and corresponding values of c in y is equal to mx plus c so let us see when m is equal to 2 when m is equal to 2 c is equal to 0 when m is equal to 2 c is equal to 0 if we substitute these two values in y is equal to mx plus c we have y is equal to 2x next if m is equal to minus 1 then c is equal to minus 2 so substituting m is equal to minus 1 and c is equal to minus 2 we have y is equal to minus x minus 2 and finally putting m is equal to 1 and c is equal to minus 1 in y is equal to mx plus c we get y is equal to x minus 1 so these three straight lines are the required oblique asymptotes of the curve so this is how we find oblique asymptotes of a given curve